Today on Big Red's Cooking, we make fireweed jelly. Hi, and welcome back to Big Red's Cooking. I'm Big Red, aka Darcy in the real world. And today we're going to make fireweed jelly. Now, you might be asking yourself, what is fireweed? So this is fireweed. It's all over the place. There's abundance of it. You've probably seen it all over the place before and you just didn't know what the name was. It's one of my favorite flowers. Ah, oh, it smells so good. I first learned about this when I lived in the Yukon. This is actually the territorial flower of the Yukon. It's so pretty. Uh, they use it for lots of different things up there. And I'm really looking forward to sharing my fireweed jelly recipe with you today. All right, so here's a little tip for helping you to pick this stuff. We don't need the whole plant. All we really want is these beautiful flowers. So all I usually do is I just take the whole flower, the whole plant, just stick it in, grip a hold of it, and just rip off my flowers. You can see I've even left the top still on so that those remaining buds can open up and become flowers. It's very simple, it's very easy to do. So in no time at all, you can just continue on and you'll have a full bag of flower tops great for making your jelly all right so i'm back from picking my fireweed uh, i've gone through i've cleaned it up i picked out made sure there's no green leaves left made sure there's no bugs i managed to come home with a few bugs you always do yeah that's wild food so i've gone through i've measured it off and I've got about eight cups, which works out really good. Now I'm gonna have, just like with all my other videos, I will have the full recipe typed out with all the texts and everything on my website, bigredscooking.ca. You can go there to get the, the recipe and the proportions and things like that. But I've got about eight cups of flowers. So I'm gonna step on over to the stove here now in a moment. I'm gonna add my water and we're gonna start making our tea. Now I've also gathered all my tools that I need for my the canning process, you know, putting in the bottles. And uh, I'll talk about that while I'm over at the stove as well. All right, so we're back over the stove here now. We've got our flour sitting here in the pot and I've got some water I'm gonna to add to that now in a moment. Uh, I've got my canning pot here and I've got my jars in there. I've got my funnel in there, my specific funnel for my jars, and I've got my ladle in there. So anything that's going to come in contact with food, I've got in here to make sure it's going to get properly sanitized. I've already got that turned on so that water can come up to a boil and that's going to sanitize our jars and all of our tools for us so we have no real risk of contaminating our food. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add four cups of cold water right in on top of these flowers. And I'm gonna turn that on and we're gonna bring that up to a simmer. All right. Now in the meantime, I've also got a small pot here and it's got my lids into it and I'm gonna bring that up to a simmer as well. And that's gonna do two things for us. One, that's gonna soften up that seal on those jars to make sure it gets a good tight seal. When, it, uh, when we put the, uh, the lids onto them. But as well, that's gonna sanitize those lids for us. Okay, so our pot here is boiling nice. We can see we got some steam coming off the top of our pot. Our liquid for our jelly is starting to come to a little bit of a simmer. I'm just gonna give it a bit of a mash. And we can already see as we press down, we're starting to see a little bit of color. Our flowers are starting to fade out as that liquid starts, or as that color starts moving into our liquid. And then our lids here, and I'm just gonna pop this under this camera for a moment, and we can see our lids here in our water. Are doing quite nicely. Okay, so our flowers are simmering off nicely here. Our lids are done, they come to a boil, so I'm just gonna move them to the side. I've actually already moved my canning pot over to my workbench just to get it out of the way. Now that my 
flowers are simmering away here and we, we get that a little pressed down you can see we've got that lovely color there. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add in a quarter of a cup of lemon juice and this should actually help to brighten it up. And if you watch carefully you can see it get nice and bright as I added that lemon juice in. So I'm going to give that a little bit of a stir and we're going to let this simmer for a few more minutes and then we're going to shift it off the stove and we're going to start to strain it. And so you can see how lovely that color is. Now that lemon juice is not just for the color. I'm going to be adding pectin to this as well. And pectin works much better when it has an acid to react to and that's what's going to give us our thickness. And that's what's going to give us our body to our jelly. So we're going to let this simmer for about another five more minutes and then we're going to, sh we're going to strain it off and I've got a really nice fine mesh strainer that we'll pass it through. So our tea is all ready here now I think, our flower tea as I like to refer to it. So I've just turn that off. I've got my pod here with my real nice thick or really fine strainer. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully pour this pot down into it and let all that lovely juice strain off. Now I'm always really careful when I pour this to pour any hot liquids away from myself and that way if anything were to slip I don't have to worry about hitting me having it splash all over me. So we can see how faded out those flowers are now. Alright, so I'm just going to take my masher here and I'm just going to give this a little squeeze so I make sure I get every last little bit of that luscious, beautiful goodness. So we can see we've got that beautiful, beautiful purple magenta fuchsia type color. Alright. So what we have to do now is that we have to add our sugar. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to measure this off. I'll give you a little trick here. This works really, really, I'm a big fan of the metric. You know, growing up in the 80s as I did, it was all metric and things like that. So if you measure this off, what you can do is for every milliliter of liquid, you can use one gram of sugar. So you should have about four cups or one liter, which means you're going to be using about one kilogram of sugar if you follow using the same amounts I have. Now, if you didn't do that, and again, you'll be able to look at my website and I'll have the actual recipe there for you. Don't worry about that. But personally, I love using a kitchen scale. I just find it so much easier to work with. So I'm going to get my sugar and we'll add that in here now. So we've got our liquid all strained off. I've measured that off and I've got my sugar here now. I'm going to go ahead I'm just going to add that sugar right on in. And yeah, that is a lot of sugar. But there generally is when we're making jellies. And I'm going to go ahead and add two packs of Serto. Now I personally prefer the liquid. If you want to use the powder, feel free. But this is really what's going to give us the gelatin, or not the gelatin, but the jelly that we're looking for. So we've got our pectin added in, as well as our sugar. I've got this turned back on. Now we're going to have to bring this back up and let this simmer for a few minutes so that we actually get the thickness and the consistency that we're looking for. Now one of the other important things too is obviously we want to make that make sure our sugar is fully dissolved through this. So I'm just going to give this a little bit of a stir. And we will have to bring this to a full boil. So our jelly is simmering away quite nicely here. It's actually at a boil which is what we want. We need that to be able to cook that sugar and get it up to that correct temperature. 
Alright, so I've actually added my candy thermometer into my pot as well, just to be able to confirm my temperature is where I want it to be. And it's right around that 220 degrees Fahrenheit mark, which is what I want. Ideally, actually, I try and get it a little bit higher. So maybe if I shift that a little bit, just get that little bit of extra heat there. All right, now, you do not need a candy thermometer, but it is a tool that I do recommend using. I use it whenever I'm making anything with sugar and liquid like this, like, you know, like a jelly. But I also use it for a number of other things. I use it often when I'm deep frying because I want to make sure that my fat's not getting too hot, things like that. So it is a really valuable tool, but by no means it's not one that you need. Don't go rushing out. But if you're going to make lots of jellies and things like that, not a bad idea to invest in. So I want this to simmer for about 10 minutes in total so that it has that consistency that I'm looking for. And what you can always do if you really want to make sure, if you want to cheat a little bit, you can take a plate, put it into the freezer, let that plate get nice and icy cold. Do that before you start anything else, actually. And then what you can do is you can take a little bit of that jelly and just pour it onto that plate and see how well it sets up. And that will give you a good indication as to what the consistency is going to be like once it's actually been cooled down and properly bottled off and things like that. So we're going to step away from the stove there now. I'm going to let this finish simmering off. And at that point, we will meet you over on the workbench and we're going to move into our final stage. And we're going to actually start to bottle this off. All right, so my jars are all nice and sanitized now. I've got my pot of water all hot and ready to go. Once I've got my jars all filled and the lids on. My jelly is here and it's nice and hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and start filling up all my jars now. Being very careful not to overfill my jars because we want to make sure that we've left enough space at the top so that we can get that good seal. So I love this nice wide funnel. It fits right down inside my jars and is actually perfect for measuring out how much needs to go into the jar. So what I find works really well is that if I bring my liquid, whatever it is I'm putting into my jars, just to the bottom of this, it perfectly fills my jars up, leaving enough space at the top. Okay, so now that my jars are all filled, I'm going to go ahead and get my lids put on. Now again, we want to work nice and clean. Nice advantage with that funnel that I had is that I have no worries about anything being on the lips of these jars. I haven't had to touch them. There's no, ja no jelly onto them. And I love this tool here. It's got a magnet at the end. And what this allows me to do is just to reach in and grab my lids and not have to worry it's about touching them at all. I can... It goes down to the hot water without any issue. Bringing up one lid at a time and allowing me to place these onto the jars without any risk of contamination. And, added bonus, I don't have to worry about burning my fingers trying to reach into a pot of boiling water to pull these lids out. Okay, so we have our rings here. We're going to put our rings on. We don't want to put our rings on too tight. Because, you know, I know a lot of people will just sort of take their jams and their jellies and at this point feel they're done. I like to be precautious anytime I'm dealing with anything that I'm going to be putting away for an extended period. And these will last me for quite some time. I always want to give it a second dip into the hot water bath. So I just put them on finger tight just to make sure that the lids are on in their place. And we're going to just drop these right back down to this pot of hot water again. And we'll turn our pot back on and we'll let it simmer for about 10 minutes, at which point then. I'll feel good and safe and comfortable and not have to worry at all about any risk of contamination and it's going to improve our seal on our jars. 
And so our jars have been in here for about 10 minutes now. At this point, we're going to take them on out of our pot here. And you might even hear a few of these. If you hear, listen carefully, you might even hear a few of the lids snapping down. You can see that lovely color of that jelly. Look at how nice and clear it is. Again, this is another wonderful tool that I highly recommend if you do much canning. This is a set of tongs specifically designed for taking jars out. So we're going to leave these sit here overnight now. We're going to let them cool down. We'll taste it in the morning. Alright, so our jelly has had all night to set up now. It's all cooled. I actually, I had to pop the jar early a few minutes ago and just check it. Oh man, it's tasty. So I've gone ahead and I've actually made myself a piece of toast here. So we can see now. It's got that lovely jelly texture to it. It's got that real nice shine and that sheen that we're looking for. There's a lot of clarity to it. I'm just going ahead and spread it on that little bit of my sourdough bread, which I'm going to do a whole video for another time. Mmm. So fantastic. Mmm. Mmm. I love food, if you can't tell. So, you know, if you have not tried fireweed jelly, get out there. It's in season right now. All well, this here in rural Newfoundland, anyhow, where I'm living. Hopefully you're lucky enough to find fireweed growing where you live. If not, you know what? You're just gonna have to come visit us here in Newfoundland. Well, once all this pandemic stuff is all over. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I really enjoyed making it as I do enjoy making all my videos. Uh, you know, go ahead, please like and subscribe. I'd love it if you share this video with other friends uh, and family. I'm just trying to get, you know, build a bit of an audience out there. Uh, if there's anything else that you'd love to see me make, go ahead, please leave me a comment in the bottom and I'll do what I can to add it into the list. Otherwise, it's been great. Here's to more good cooking and we'll see you again next time around. Thank you so much and have yourself a great day.